everyone, it's Yudo here from SassyRecipes.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious, tender and flavourful ramen restaurant style pork chashu. First let's go over the ingredients. To cook the pork you need 700 grams of pork belly. If you want to use more, that's also okay. 50 grams of the green part of a spring onion. 50 grams of fresh ginger. 3 cloves of garlic. Half a white onion and one teaspoon of rice vinegar. Then for the marinade you need 50 milliliters of sake, one tablespoon of mirin, 250 milliliters of pork stock from the broth we cooked pork in, 150 milliliters of soy sauce, 30 grams of sugar. This recipe needs to marinate overnight so I recommend making it the day before you plan to eat it for the best flavor. There are also so many other ways to make chashu, but I do this way this time because you don't need to use hundreds of hundreds of milliliters of soy sauce or other ingredients. I optimize it for home cooking especially. It's always a pain when you have to use so much of condiments at home. Okay, let's start with preparing the pork. I have a piece of pork belly here and we're gonna start by stabbing it with a fork on both sides. This helps tenderize it and also helps it absorb more flavor. Once that's done, let's roll and tie it. Start rolling from the thinner side like this. Try and make the roll as tight as possible. Some people wrap it in plastic after rolling and leave it in the fridge overnight so that it holds its shape better but it's not really necessary as we're going to tie it with butcher's string. If you can get one of these nets it's super easy and you can just wrap it around the pork in a few seconds but if not I'm going to show you how to tie it with string. Make sure you're using string that is good for cooking, otherwise it could melt or contaminate your food. This is 100% cotton butcher string. Take the string and place it flat on your chopping board. Lift the pork up and onto the string, keeping it at one end. Pull the loose end and the other side of the string to the top of the pork and tie a knot. Pull it tight and then knot it again to secure it. Next, I'm going to wrap the string around my hand to make a loop. Make it so the string is crossing over at the top like this and then bring the string under and towards the opposite side. Pull over hand carefully out of the loop and place it around the pork, pulling it tight to secure it. It should be between half an inch to an inch away from the first knot. Repeat these steps until you reach the other end of the pork. Mine is quite short so I only needed 4 knots in total. Now we're going to turn it over and secure the bottom as well. So pull the string across the base and cut it a few inches longer than the length of the pork. Pull the string under the first loop and wrap it twice. Repeat this until all of the loops are connected and you will have this line going through the middle. Finally tie the end of the string to the loose end. The 
And that's it, you're perfectly rolled and secured pork belly. Next, I'm going to cut the vegetables for the broth. First, we have fresh ginger, so just scrub it clean and cut it into slices. You don't need to bother with taking the skin off. Ginger is perfect for balancing the taste of pork. Next, we have an onion. Just cut it into rough chunks like this. Then some garlic cloves. I like to cut them in half so they release more flavour. And finally the spring onion. We're just using the green part which has a more subtle flavour. Just cut it roughly so it fits in the pan. Finally it's time to cook. Place the pork in a large pot and add water until the pork is submerged. I'm also adding a piece of unrolled pork belly in here because I want to make the most of my broth but because it's not rolled it cooks a lot faster so I'll need to take it out earlier otherwise it breaks apart. So put the heat on medium and wait for it to come to a boil. In the meantime, I want to show you how to make Japanese droplet that we call otoshibuta, which I'll be using a little later in this recipe. First, break off a piece of oil or baking paper a little larger than your pot. Fold it in half to make a rectangle and then half again to make a square. Fold the square in half diagonally to make a triangle. Then fold it again so that one of the shorter edges is along the long edge. Cuff the tip, this will make a hole in the middle. Finally hold the tip in the middle of the pan and use the edge as a guide to cut a curve around the top. If it's slightly smaller than the pot, open it out and you have an otoshibuta to fit your pot. So I'm checking my pork now and the water is getting pretty hot. All this scum is floating on the top, just scoop it out. You shouldn't leave it because the broth becomes cloudy and it also affects the cooking temperature. Now that it's boiling, we can lower the heat to a simmer. It's also time to add all our vegetables from earlier. Just place them straight in like this. I also add 1 teaspoon of rice vinegar, this is just tender as pork fervor. 1 teaspoon sounds like a tiny amount but it's enough and we don't want it to make the broth sour. Finally place the droplet on top and leave it to simmer. You might be wondering what the droplet is for, well it's used to help distribute heat evenly around the food, it also stops the water from bubbling too much. If it boils too much, the ingredients will move around and could get broken. Anyway, we can leave this for now. The rolled pork will need to be simmered for 2 hours in total. And the unrolled one takes an hour and a half. We will also need to turn them halfway through. So it's been an hour. So now I'm gonna peel back the droplet and turn the rolled pork over. I already turned and rolled one about 15 minutes ago. The 
The broth should be well flavoured by now, so let's make the marinade. Take 250ml of your pork broth from the pan and transfer it to a jug. This just makes it easier for me to measure. You can pour it straight into a pan if you like. Next, add 50 milliliters of sake, 150 milliliters of soy sauce, and one tablespoon of mirin. Now pour this into a pan on a medium heat. and add 30 grams of sugar. I'm going to bring this to a boil and then let it bubble for a minute or so. This will burn off the alcohol in the sake and the mirin. Once that's done, leave it to cool down until your pork is ready. So my rolled pork has been simmering for two hours in total and I'm now ready to place it in the marinade. I like using the Ziploc bag for this because it helps cover the pork better. You can also add a few soft boiled eggs in here so that you have a few ramen eggs to serve with your chashu if you like. If you're worried about it leaking, just place the bag in a bowl or tray for peace of mind. Finally, place it in the fridge and allow it to marinate overnight. Okay, it's been 24 hours. It's time for the final step. I want to fry the char shu and use the marinade to create teriyaki kind of coating around the outside. This improves the taste and texture of the fat around the char shu. Take a pan and brown the fatty layer on the outside. You don't need any oil for this. Once you're happy with it, add 100 milliliters of the marinade to the pan. And move the pork around to help cover it with the sauce. It should become a bit thick and stick to the surface of the char shu. Once it's done, transfer it to a chopping board and leave it to rest for 10 minutes. This will make it easier to cut. Ten minutes have passed and now I'm ready to slice my char shu. Cut off the strings and then cut off the end pieces. These messy and cuts can be used to make char shu don. I have the recipe on my website and I've put the link in the description. You can also make ramen restaurant style fried rice. I've got a video for the recipe which should appear on the screen around now. Carefully cut the char shu into slices as you like. And there you have it, succulent, melt-in-the-mouth Japanese ramen restaurant-style pork chashu. Perfect for ramen, chashu don, and fried rice. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this recipe, don't forget to like this video. And if you're interested in Japanese cooking, subscribe to my channel for more delicious Japanese recipes. Hope to see you next time. Thanks again.